couple summers ago, faced with an abundance of baby cucumbers, I started learning how to make pickles. I just love them and it's really easy to do. You should check it out yourself. It only takes about four days to make refrigerator pickles and it's really simple. What happened, unfortunately for me, or actually fortunately, because it made me be resourceful, is I would eat the pickles and then I'd be left with a whole jar of pickle brine or pickle juice. So I came up with an idea. I came up with a recipe for something I call pickle juice soup. It's really tasty and delicious, and if you're a pickle lover like me, you're going to really like this. So log on to www.fork-road.com, download the recipe, and follow along with me. And actually, the cool thing is, you can download the recipe, but you kind of don't need it. On the recipe, I've listed some different things that you'd want to include. I've say celery and chard. I, I suggest maybe some fresh dill, green onion, some other things. But the reality is, every time I make this soup, I make it differently. So I'm just going to kind of go with what I had in my refrigerator. This recipe is wonderful for when you've got a bunch of stuff that you don't really know what to do with, not enough to make this recipe, too much to make that, or something might get ready to go bad. This is the perfect solution. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take our blender and load into it some of the leftover pickle brine. Now, if you don't make your own pickles like I do, and by the way, take, take some of the goodies. I put, um, so you can see there's dill and there's actually some onion in there. All of the ingredients that were in the actual pickles that I first made are going to go in there. If you don't make your own pickles at home, um, so, and you want to make this and you want to try this recipe, Buy store-bought pickles and do that, but here's the secret, and this is important. Buy the refrigerated pickles, the ones not on the shelf. The, the, the shelf-stable ones will give you a different flavor, and it's really not as good, and actually they're not as healthy. Buy the ones that are in the refrigerated section and do that. If I had some pickles left, and I don't because they were too good and I ate them all, I would throw those in as well. So put in enough, just enough that, to cover the blades. Um, if you want to put in a little bit more, like maybe I will do that too. I'll just put in a little bit more. Just kind of go to, um, to your taste. Again, the recipe will tell you some measurements if you're a measuring kind of a folk, but folks, but um, really just go ahead and experiment. Okay, so now I've got here some mixed greens that are left over from a salad mix that I had bought. There's kale and chard and a little bit of baby spinach. I'm going to put that in there first because the greens are really important in here. So you can see already we're going to have a really healthy concoction. Um, I have some carrot. I'm going to take um, a couple of carrots. I've just taken the, the, I've topped and tailed the carrot, which means take, cutting the two ends off. I'll put in, maybe I'll put in, again, just eyeball it, that much carrot. I've got a tomato. Tomato adds a nice acid balance to the dish, and so I really try to add a tomato every time I can. What I do to make the tomato um, work for me is sometimes I'll use a serrated knife, but other times I'll just use my chef knife, cut the top out, put the top into my compost bin, Cut the tomato in half or in quarters if you want to do that. And then that simply goes in to the blender. Now I've got a cucumber that I hadn't used for, for something else. I'm going to cut that. You'll notice I'm not peeling things. I'm going to cut the end off because I don't want that little, um, the, the growth end. And then again, just a light chop, nothing fancy here. Put those into the blender. Now you'll notice I've also got some herb. This is um, cilantro. You could use basil. Dill would be lovely in here. Whatever you've got, don't put too much in. You can always go back and add more, but once you've added too much herb, then you're going to have to adjust and it's, it's not going to work out as well. If you're short on pickle juice itself, um, you can add a little bit of water to stretch it, but because I've added tomato, tomato's a, a watery vegetable, so is cucumber, that's going to add to the water content of the soup itself, so I don't have to worry about necessarily having it be too thick. But if I wanted to thin it down, it's really easy to do with water. I'm going to snap the lid on. Make sure it's on good and tight. If you've ever turned on a high-speed blender and not had the lid be on tight, you know you've had a mess because I've done it. And you can see I've got it blended, but it's not completely blended. And the reason why is I've got one final ingredient that I don't put in until the very end. And that final ingredient is avocado. Now the avocado is going to do a couple of things. And actually, I just looked down and realized it's not my final ingredient. I've got two other things I'm going to add to this dish. I'm going to add a little bit of lemon juice and a little bit of garlic. 
And when I turn it back on, I'm also going to have in there some avocado. Now the reason I wait until the end to put the avocado in, if I put the avocado in too soon, it gets frothy. And we don't want a frothy soup. It also, when it overblends, gives it a little bit of an off flavor. So I'm going to take my chef knife and to properly cut my avocado, cut around, give it a twist. My avocado is perfect. It's just the right colors. It's, it's going to be a good consistency. So I'll take a spoon. I'm just going to add half of the avocado to this. I could add the whole avocado if I wanted, but this isn't a very big batch of soup. So I'll put the, put the flesh of half of the avocado in, put the lid back on, blend it once again. You'll notice I blended it just briefly, just enough so that the avocado gets incorporated into the soup and makes it creamy and rich and delicious. Give this a try, and if you don't make your own pickles, look into doing that too. I think you'll be glad you did.